<laughs> okay, so uh, I'm Travis with Tactical Faith, and we're a Christian nonprofit focusing on life of the mind of the church, uh, based in Birmingham, Alabama. We're here in Oxford, Mississippi, at the True Story 19 conference, and I'm sitting with Catherine Neeracker. Yes. Uh, Good job. Who, who is, uh, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your ministry is? Um, well, I am, I, six years ago, I was an atheist, and um, something incredible happened in my life, and I realized that, you know, Jesus is Lord, and that the Bible is a true story. Um, but after I got saved, about a year later, I had a crisis of faith. I recalled something that I read when I was an atheist that was written by Biz Bishop Desmond Tutu, mm -hmm. and he said that faith was a matter of geography. And I thought, oh my goodness, like, when I got sick, what if I would have been in Iraq? Would I have reached out for a Bible? Right. Or would I have reached for a Quran? Mm -hmm. so, <coughs> so odds are, I, you know, I thought, well, I would have reached for a Quran. And that really, really troubled me. So um, that's when God showed me 1 Peter 3.15. It says, always be prepared to have a reason for the hope that is in you for those who ask, but do so with gentleness and respect. And so um, I had gone to law school, and I was like, wow, that, that sounds like legalese to me. I mean, th this sounds like, you know, defending the faith, you know, defending the truth. And um, so then I really, really started learning a lot about apologetics, but what, um, what I started to realize was, you know, there's these evangelists who they speak about the Bible. They, they can quote scripture, you know, literally like it's their job. Mm -hmm. But yet if you say, well, you know what? I don't trust the Bible. You know, I, I don't believe that that book is historically accurate. The next thing the evangelist will do is point to 2 Timothy, I think it's 316 and go, you know, it's inspired. And, but we know, you know, like as a lawyer, you can't point to you know, evidence is being true as evidence of it being true. And on the other hand, I would listen to some apologists talk and I, I would hear them say things like, well, I can convince people God exists without using the Bible or talking about Jesus. And I thought, well, that, that's not good either. And so about a year and a half or a year and a half ago, God gave me a word, evangetics. And so what evangetics, what the ministry, this is a brand new ministry, mm -hmm. um, but what it will be devoted to doing is helping people love the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul. And, um, you know, loving the Lord with your mind is knowing how to defend the faith. Loving the Lord with your soul is getting into his word and letting it penetrate you and asking God to give you the wisdom, you know, James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, right? right. Um, in order to share your faith, but then to be able to turn around and, and have the answers. Right. So I'm guessing a lot of this comes not just from your experience of evangelicals and your experience of those in apologetics, but from your own ex from your own experience. Mm -hmm. So how is how did God bring you to himself? What were the were there intellectual was there an intellectual side that was married to a, a more experiential or whatever word you want to use? But that that experience of, of God's grace where did you find them working together? Yeah, and you know, I think my my dad died when I was 10 and my siblings there's a significant age difference between us and so within 2 years, you know, my dad died, they moved away and my mom had to go to work. Mm -hmm. And I went to a Catholic school and I remember learning that, you know, God loves me unconditionally, but yet he just wiped out my entire family, you know. And I couldn't square up the God of the Old Testament who would smite you if you stepped a centimeter out of line with Jesus, who, you know, wants to be your friend. Um, and so that really troubled me. So I was mad at God. But then as I got older, he also was interfering with my party plans, right? Yeah. Um, so I rejected him in my early 20s. And then six years ago, I got really sick. And um, I was out Christmas shopping. And I was going to Kohl's, but there was a family Christian bookstore right next door. And so I felt drawn in and I was standing in front of a bunch of Bibles and I just knew I needed one. And so I, I got one. And when I got into the parking lot, I thought to myself, why, why would I 
you know, buy this book for my mom. I, I remember thinking, I'll give it to my mom for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I heard a voice say, it's not for her. It's for you. And so I opened the book, and I haven't put it down since. I, I, I just, I haven't. <laughs> so so that's, that's fascinating. I think, I think one, of the, one of the issues that a lot, and I've heard this from a number of people, and I myself have had struggles with this, the idea that it's not so much about, there, there's an evident, there, there's, a, there's an element where you can believe that God exists, mm -hmm. and you almost can't shake it. But you don't like God. Like, uh, God is not for me. And so, and it, it's kind of like what you, like, God is, is constantly getting in the way. God has taken this from me, taken this from me. This is not right. Look at the, and then you can expand that into the whole problem of evil. Right. The world is not as it's supposed to be. Right. Um, so was it your encounter with scripture, your encounter with the sickness, that you began to realize that God is acting, that God loves you? Well, that, those are, yeah, there's two different answers to that. When I first opened the Bible and read the words, in the beginning of God, I was given the gift of faith. I can't explain that. Huh. I knew that book was true. I didn't know how I knew it was true, but I was like, how did I ever even doubt this? You know what I mean? Um, but then when I first read Ephesians um, 2, 8, 9, for it is by grace you have been saved mm -hmm. through faith. And this is not of yourself, you know, not by works. It's a gift from God so that no one can boast. That flew in the face of everything I was taught as a Catholic. And it was yeah. so liberating. Yeah. I, I, I felt so shackled by the doctrine of the Catholic Church. And as far as, you know, God's unconditional love, I still struggle with that. I mean, I, I'm a six-year-old Christian. You know what I mean? I just turned six. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I do sometimes I look in the mirror and think, I don't know how God could love me. You know, but that is something that I know he's working, you know, in me. And, and he keeps showing me. He keeps showing me every day how much he loves me. He, he recognizes our weakness. And yeah. so, so this is this is part of the part of what you're trying to talk about. So evangelics, in case nobody's getting it, evangelism, apologetics, mm -hmm. you put them together mm -hmm. um, and that that these two are not there's not an intellectual endeavor that is separate Right. From the personal loving, the sharing of the testimony, the, the sharing of the love of God, right. the, the, the love of the person before you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those aren't to be separated. No, because when you, you know, when you share the word of God with someone, you share it out of love. You share it. I mean, we don't earn extra cool points, right, in heaven that we get to cash in once we get up there. Yeah. We do it because we believe what we believe and we know that if people choose to reject God, they're, they're not going to end up in a good place. And, and so we share our faith because we love you and we care. But it's important to be able to help people remove stumbling blocks, you yeah. know. But it's also so important to know when to take off the apologetics hat and put on the minister hat. Yeah. Because I, you know, early on in my walk made mistakes where you know I'm, I'm sitting there trying to witness to someone talking about the cosmological argument and they're wrecked on the inside because they were abused as a child and the, the cosmological argument isn't going to comfort anybody yeah. you know so that's where um you know having the discernment of the word and and being spirit led is mm -hmm. so important and i think sometimes people who get you know really um, passionate about apologetics, myself included, we, we tend to get really cerebral about yeah. everything and kind of forget about the heart. And I think that's where evangelism, you know, comes into play and the two go together. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for thank this time. You. And we're, we'll link to your stuff, follow her. You can, if you're following us on Twitter, you'll find, uh, find links to her, to her, uh, to her Twitter and through that, everything else, but we'll, we'll connect you in. Thank you so much for your talks here, and thank you for talking with us. Well, thank you. Right. Thank right. you. God bless. I think so. I don't know. I think this is better to be interviewed. I need to learn how to interview. No, you did so, good. You did but, great. You did great. It's fascinating. Okay. Well. So do, do you need any information or?